A while ago, I posted a teaser for a transponderless uh, video based uh, lap timing system that I've been working on, and I finally got around to cleaning up uh, my build and, and making kind of basic notes uh, and get in, getting everything up on GitHub. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, link people to that and kind of walk through the uh, the basics of setting up the project. I've been using it for a while now and it just works really well, really simple. Uh, it's great for just going out, plugging in a LiPo and, and throwing it down on the ground and having something to give you that instant feedback uh, when you're practicing out on your own. Now this isn't a uh, super, I haven't done a, a ton of cleanup on it, so it's still all very work in progress. Um, it's really simple to put together. It's not very complicated to use, um, but uh, for the moment, uh, just be you know willing to put in some legwork uh, if you have to to do some some troubleshootings. I don't have everything uh, you know super uh, buttoned up like a commercial product yet, um, but everything functions. So if you uh, are looking for a really uh, cheap transponderless tracker, uh, this is great. The parts uh, it really only uses three three kind of major parts. A, a a voltage regulator, uh, huzzah ESP uh, dev board, and an RX5808 video receiver module. Uh, so it's maybe 25, 30 bucks in parts. And if you don't, uh, if you use a, a basic ESP module and, and don't go with the, the huzzah with all the built in stuff, uh, then you could do it for even cheaper than that. So you can find the source code and uh, uh, hardware schematics for like a basic prototype uh, on my github uh, at extent 421 slash q1 for the q1 personal lap timer project uh, the software builds in arduino uh, it's set up to build on uh, arduino 1.8.1 uh, and you want to download uh, in the board manager uh, the esp86 community version 2.3.0 uh, is the current one that's out there uh, that this works with I also have, uh, once you've uh, set up the firmware, I'm using the uh, over-the-air update module, uh, and I really recommend using that to um, that to update the board, because uh, it's just way faster than the serial, and the uh, ESP8266 sketch data upload plugin, which is uh, mentioned in that uh, readme file in the, in the repo. Um, use that to dump the, uh, the HTML files uh, that it uh, uses uh, for its control. Uh, the whole thing is based around a, a captive portal, uh, so it spawns an AP that you can connect to with any device uh, and uh, go to any web page and then it'll redirect you to its control page for it. So it doesn't use Bluetooth, it's all strictly Wi-Fi, so you don't need any apps or anything like that, just connect it with a phone or a tablet or a computer, uh, use it in infrastructure mode and connect to an actual access point and connect over the network uh, to uh, anything if you know you happen to be in an office or something like that where there you have a Wi-Fi blanket uh, all of those options are available in the uh, configuration for it hardware wise all you need for the the very kind of basic prototype version this is this is what you would uh, you know you're if you're building it on a breadboard this is all you need for that um, very 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 simple the huzzah basically just we hook the uh, SPI pins up to the RX5808 SPI pins. Uh, we've got a, a little voltage divider just to drop the RSSI down and to uh, uh, tie that down to ground. Uh, voltage regulator, plug in a 3-4S LiPo, you know, something like a, um, a Pololu uh, where I use a Murata power, a little mini switching supplies. Uh, and then I've got a header thing that you can plug a beeper in uh, if you to uh, that so it beeps every time you pass by the laps you can you can uh, tell that it's uh, constantly registering laps uh, and you can use it to sync up with the uh, DVR audio when you start a session it, it uh, does a, a, a beep sequence and if you can hear that on your DVR or your HD backup camera uh, that you have you can use that to sync up uh, your lap timing footage with uh, what the tracker is seeing. The only kind of trick to the whole thing is uh, you need to do the SPI mod on the RX5808 um, from the factory. They don't come enabled uh, for SPI communication. Uh, and uh, you can just search for 5808 SPI mod and, and see uh, that's a really common thing for people doing uh, the open source LaForge uh, and uh, other things like that. So that's uh, pretty really easy to do. Just remove the um, RF shield and crack one resistor off the, the thing and then you're ready to go. 
And this schematic is just uh, a PDF in the uh, hardware section of the repository. Here's how I put together my prototype version of the hardware. Um, this is built just on the back of a, a little kind of 3D printed carrier. You can see I've just got some little standoffs there and or kind of a loop. And uh, things are just uh, zip tied together, nothing complicated, nothing super crazy. Uh, with the uh, the huzzah on the top, just kind of held down by the corners. The uh, 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 regulator, 5 volt regulator, uh, just like uh, similar to a Pololu, you could use a Pololu for that. And uh, the video receiver with its little uh, pigtail soldered on. Uh, and then just all of the uh, the wiring just direct point to point. Uh, you know, the uh, um, SPI or over on this side and the uh, analog uh, RSSI feeds across just kind of around uh, the outside to that. Everything kind of tucked down, all the wiring is zip tied on there so like none of these will can, can pull. It's not uh, super, like you don't want to bang it around and, and smash it, but it's perfectly fine for throwing in a bag and tossing out in the field uh, just with a XT60 for the pack, and then uh, for the buzzer, I just have uh, this, that's uh, a buzzer driver, uh, you know, transistor uh, driver uh, right in there, just like you would use if you were um, uh, hooking a buzzer up to like a, a CC3D or something like that that didn't have a driver built in. Uh, and then I just have that on normal little plug that I use for uh, my buzzers and my quads, so this just comes right off um, what I can, uh, what I fly on my little things, just the same uh, connections and hardware I use for that. Uh, this is the little uh, two pin reset uh, switch. I don't keep a switch on it because it's just kind of there for troubleshooting and if I need to I can always just uh, poke in there with uh, a knife to, to do the reset. Simple, small package, easy to carry around uh, and uh, you know you don't have to mess around with a large uh, breadboard and wires dangling all over. You can still, even without getting a, a custom PCB made and, and doing it all uh, you know, super fancy. You can get a nice small package uh, just for, for bumming around with. So there you go. Hope that's enough to get uh, people started uh, hacking away at it uh, if you're interested. Um, I'm going to uh, do a video soon uh, showing uh, how to actually use a thing, uh, how the, the UI works and stuff like that, but it's fairly straightforward. You just uh, go to the captive portal and click connect and you've got a settings page you can go through and change the settings calibrate your low and your high rssi uh by you know holding your quad around um while you've got your video transmitter on and uh you know click start session to start timing laps uh the main idea is once you're done with the session you can hit click stop and uh send it uh click a button and it will um send it as a text file to your email that you can email to yourself so you don't have to mess around with files and that uh and you, you can really easily get to it from your home computer um and then i have some software uh that i'm still working on to uh render out uh, video overlays and stuff like that using that log file uh but that's still to come in the future uh so good luck make something cool